How's it going, folks? My name is Marcus Attilius, and this is The Bowline. The Bowline is a solo duo starter to main optimized for vanilla or 2x servers after a BP wipe. It takes its name from the bowline knot, one of the most versatile and fundamental knots anybody can learn. This base design begins from what is essentially a slightly juiced up 2x1. Because of this, the footprint stays reasonable and the build costs are easily managed by a solo or a duo. The bowline costs 5.4k wood, 15.3k stone, 9.3k metal, and 236 high quality metal at end state and can be built in three distinct stages. In this configuration, the base has eight large boxes, 20 small boxes, 10 barbecues, and four campfires, adding up to a total of 20.8 large boxes worth of storage. It has six furnaces, room for both a tier two and tier three workbench, a research table, repair bench, two lockers, two beds, two sleeping bags, four shotgun traps, three to four large solar panels, one medium or large rechargeable battery, three root combiners, one switch and four electrical branches. Additionally, the exterior of the base is defended by four auto turrets that can be contained within pods accessible from inside the base. This is extremely convenient for servicing the turrets from the safety of behind a garage door. However, the pods are optional and I am not factoring them into the overall strength of the base. All of these deployables have a real component, metal and HQM cost, especially the garage doors. I noticed that a lot of builders either don't mention it or gloss over this point. Keep those costs in mind and remember that a well-designed base takes progression into account. With all that out of the way, let's take a tour. Approaching the second floor entrance, we find a pretty standard door block air block with the addition of a shotgun trap to discourage an opportunistic player from going deep. There's also a window for added visibility. Stepping inside, we first encounter some drop-off loot storage, a garage door, and another window. Now you can only pick up this window if you have building privilege. Anyone else is forced to raid it. On the other side of this garage door is a jump up to the shooting floor and minicopter garage. We'll head up there first. On our way up, we pass some more drop-off loot storage and a shotgun trap to help slow a top-down raider. This window gives us maintenance access to one of the four auto turrets helping to defend the base. From here, we can access the shooting floor, which gives us about 300 degrees of visibility. There is a second top-level auto turret accessible through this window. Another shotgun trap guards the minicopter entrance, and we see some more drop-off loot storage. Heading up to the roof using either one of these concrete barricades, which also serves as partial cover when we're accessing the garage from a minicopter, we find we find four we find four large solar panels feeding power to our turrets. You'll notice that these two triangles are left wood. They serve only to make landing a minicopter easier. Back down to the second floor, we can use the water purifier to better jump through this window. If you happen to own the Kirsch Cauldron Campfire skin, use that instead as it requires no additional components beyond the campfire and is easier to use. Once through the window, we see the repair bench deployed. Just past the bench and through another glass window, we find three of our six furnaces. The other three are just over here. Moving past those furnaces takes us into one of our bedrooms with a locker, three small boxes, and a large box for storage. Additionally, there's a window here to serve as both additional visibility and access to our third auto turret. Next, we'll pass a research table containing another large box and into the other bedroom. There's another locker, three small boxes, and a large box. And once again, we have a window here for that final auto turret. You'll notice campfires at the entrance to both bedrooms. This is to serve as both additional storage and a ramp, so you don't have to jump to enter the bedroom. Heading down into the core, we pass the stability bunker seal and enter to find two sleeping bags, a level three workbench, a level two is behind it, sealed into the honeycomb, our battery and our electrical circuit. Over here is a simple high storage loot room that requires no entity clipping or advanced building exploits. Feel free to substitute your own configuration if this doesn't work for you, keeping in mind that you do need to leave line of sight access to the tool cupboard, which we find behind this reinforced glass window. All right, that concludes the tour. Let's build it. First things first, let's build and have a look at the final footprint of the base. We need to make sure that the bowline is gonna comfortably fit where we wanna build it. We start with a two by one with two additional triangle foundations on either long side. 
One of these triangles will hold the TC, the other will serve as a temporary ground level entrance and eventually shoot from the floor. From here, wall off the entire structure. Two door frames will go here to serve as airlock. Upgrade all foundations to stone, but only take to stone the walls in the triangle and square directly next to the TC, as shown. The other walls, both door frames and the triangle ceiling in the airlock need to be left as wood for now. The square ceiling next to the airlock can be upgraded to stone. Let's go ahead and get the TC down. While placing the TC, make sure to place it as far to the right as you can while still being able to place a wall, while still being able to place a window frame in front of it. This is to be able to access it later whenever the square next to it is a full loot room. Two wooden single doors and a wooden double door create a double door block airlock. You can fill out the square next to the TC with your starting boxes, a couple of sleeping bags, and that ever critical first furnace. Go ahead and place a window frame in front of the TC. Even if you don't have the reinforced glass window blueprint yet, it doesn't hurt. Over here, a tier one workbench and up to three additional furnaces can be placed in this adjacent square. It can be tricky getting this third furnace in. I usually just open the door and deal with the awkward. And that's stage one complete. It only costs you 2.8k stone, 1.6k wood, and you have a functioning, secure starter base. Next, we'll expand a bit and get the base ready for the stability bunker. When you're ready to move on, head inside, pick up the furnaces, and begin hatcheting out all of the entities that we left wood in the first stage. A reminder, soft side of wood building entities only takes three machetes to destroy. Where these two walls once were, place triangle foundations and seal on the outside. These spaces will house your eventual battery and tier two workbench respectively. Incidentally, if you are ready for that tier two, now's the time to craft it. Hatch it out the tier one and get the new workbench situated in its forever home inside of this triangle. Eventually it will get a window frame and a reinforced glass window to add to the honeycomb strength. The former airlock gets flanked by two raised foundations and then cap those off with half walls and some triangle ceiling tiles. Next, stack two half walls here. Destroy the lower and upgrade the remaining top piece. At this point, you now have a functioning stability bunker. Now, if you haven't acquired the ladder blueprint yet, don't worry. A furnace jump up is a fine substitute in the meantime. Head upstairs and cap the chute as shown. We'll close this off with a double door which personally, I like to have opening inward at this stage. It's easier to close the doors from inside the base downstairs. In order to access the base in this state, we'll need to pick a spot on the ground. How about here? Place a temporary foundation and a half wall to jump up. Head back down, replace your deployables, reorganize your living space if you need to. Next, I'll show you how to seal. So in order to seal this stability bunker, as with any stability bunker, you have to do it from outside. Place a twig half wall here and a floor triangle here. Upgrade the floor triangle to whatever state works for your current build. And you're free to leave. And that's stage two complete. And the next step, we'll finish construction and make the necessary upgrades to get this base to its final rage strength. 
Ideally, you've obtained both the garage door and reinforced glass window blueprint at this point. However, the window is the only one that I consider required in order to continue. We'll start by fleshing out the core. Head outside and place a temporary foundation, half wall, and triangle piece to create a shelf inside for our main loot room. I'm going to use the jump up we placed earlier. Back inside, we'll first replace the double door with a garage door and place the shelf. Next, we'll fill out this loot room. Again, you can go with whatever configuration you prefer here. This is just the layout I reach for most often. Few placement up top directly in front of the TC. Do not place a small box beneath this barbecue. You'll need to be able to access the TC and this, and this is, is going to give you that line of sight. Stop fast forwarding. We'll be heading up to build the second and third floors, as well as place the honeycomb. But for now, feel free to temporarily place sleeping bags and furnaces in this square and triangle while we work up top. Heading up, replace the double door leading into the main chute with the garage door, and then drop down to begin making upgrades and to place the ground level honeycomb. Start by destroying the half wall and triangle we previously used to jump up and to place that shelf in the main loot room. Now we can begin re recreating that initial footprint. Before placing foundations next to the TC, upgrade the foundations as shown. Pay special note to the raised foundations sealing the bunker. They need to be armored. Additionally, three of the four exterior facing half walls need to be armored as well. This one can be left sheet metal. As you circle around, the back wall of the main loot room directly adjacent to the TC also needs to be upgraded to HQM. Begin walling in the ground level honeycomb, upgrading as you go along. What you're left with is the final stone honeycomb. Two roof pieces and single walls go on these final square foundation tiles. One is a functional ramp and will become our permanent entrance going forward the other is honeycomb. Heading up, the triangles on either side of the main chute need to be armored, as do the two square tiles and the single triangle tile protecting our core and the TC. The final stage for the chute will be sheet metal. Don't forget to upgrade these inner half walls as well. Now let's work on the second floor. Here we will place two single door frames to serve as our new door block airlock. A window frame can be placed here, and a shotgun trap here to guard the main entrance. Behind that airlock will be the chute to the third floor. We can go ahead and get that started. A barbecue and a couple of small boxes serves nicely as drop-off loot storage. Opposite that jump up, place a window frame in a reinforced glass window. Drop either the cursed cauldron or a campfire with a water purifier next to it here to make the jump through easier on this side. On the other side of the window, enclose the second floor with walls and window frames like this. Upgrade the wall next to the entrance to sheet metal, as well as the walls that will eventually house your bedrooms. As an aside, making the bedroom sheet metal isn't strictly necessary for the TZ raid pack. I would still recommend it, since you'll likely be storing your second best kits and weapons in those lockers and boxes. The other walls and the window frames can be stone. Let's close all of this off with a roof and upgrade as shown. Make sure this triangle and these two square pieces are sheet metal. The triangle ceiling above the TC also needs to be sheet metal, and the space above it can now house three of our furnaces. Once those are placed, seal them in the window. Place wall frames as shown and populate them with garage doors. Those other furnaces can be placed here on the way into one of your bedrooms. Fill out the bedroom as shown. Before heading into the next bedroom, drop the research table here and place a large box underneath. Now, fill up that bedroom. 
Your repair bench and a couple of small boxes fit nicely here. This also makes it easier to crawl back through the window to head up to the second floor or leave the base. Back at the main chute, you can fit a barbecue, a small box, and a shotgun trap on the upper shelf. Now, I've intentionally left most of the floor space on these two square tiles blank. Feel free to throw down as many boxes as you desire if you end up needing more storage during your wipe. I personally like the freedom of movement. Let's head back down inside the core and finish the upgrades accessible only from inside. Every foundation down here needs to be sheet metal. There's no reason to upgrade these to HQM, by the way, even the square foundation next to the TC. Destroying this foundation before the armored wall attached to it is destroyed will A, not destroy the armored wall, as it's attached to another wall of the same strength, and that second wall is attached to an armored foundation, and B, since the foundations are so close to the ground, a character model cannot fit underneath them to gain deeper access to the base anyway. The hanging half wall here does need to be sheet metal. Personally, I like to upgrade as many wall frames as possible in my bases to sheet metal. However, it's not strictly necessary. It does make placing entities a lot easier as stone has a bigger hitbox than sheet metal. I'll do it here, but use your discretion and consider how many metal frags you have. Place either a large or medium battery here. Either will fit. The medium is all that is required for the defenses I've shown. However, a large battery will give you greater flexibility if you want to add more electrical components later on. Seal off the battery with a window frame. You can place a glass window now if you like. I'm going to place the electrical components necessary for the circuit before I seal off the battery. Personally, I like to pre-wire my circuit even if I don't have a power source deployed just yet. Three root combiners, a switch, and four electrical branches complete the bowline's basic circuit. Set these branches to output 10 power. The root combiners will feed power into the battery. The battery then passes power to the branches with the switch acting as both a way to turn on and off the circuit and prioritize charging of the battery when there's no need to draw power. Once you're ready for a tier three workbench, it can be placed directly in front of the tier two. Two small boxes can be placed underneath the tier three by rotating it and placing them as shown. Another large box should squeeze in nicely in front of the battery. Let's head up and add the mini copter garage and shooting floor. Once you're up top, cap off the chute as we've done before. This time, have the chute's garage door roller facing inward. You'll see why later. Place additional wall frames here and here. Next, enclose the garage with window frames as shown and take everything to stone. At this point, you have a choice. You can populate these window frames with glass windows or metal embrasures. One offers more security, the other a more immediate defense bonus. A word of caution, eco raiders love seeing embrasures on a shooting floor. In this case, it is direct access to the vulnerable soft side of the floor tiles serving as our roof. For this reason, I am choosing to fully populate these window frames with glass windows. If you find yourself particularly metal fragment rich, you can actually place both a glass window and your favorite embrasure in the same socket as shown here. I like this compromise as it allows the base defender to pick up the glass window with a hammer and have immediate cover to better defend their base from the shooting floor. In any case, another barbecue and small box go here as well as in the chute for additional drop off storage. A shotgun trap is placed here to defend the chute with another one here to defend the garage entrance. Two wooden triangles go here to assist with landings. If you don't have the concrete barricade blueprint yet, use a twig half wall to access the roof. Otherwise, place barricades on either side of the landing area to provide both cover and jump up access to service your eventual power sources. Heading up to the roof, we can place some large solar panels. I'm using four here, but you can get by with three if you don't quite have the HQM to spare just yet. Connecting all four to the root combiners in the core, We'll immediately bring your entire circuit online if you opted to pre-wire as I did to the root combiners. If you have the metal fragments and the gears to spare, I highly recommend using these auto turret pods. A shout out to Evil Vust for these. These pods allow you to place and service your auto turrets from safety and protect your turrets from being shot out by a dedicated raider with a compound bow. 
When placing the garage doors for the pod, make sure to have the rollers clip into the base. This allows you to open and close the doors from inside. This is why we made sure the garage door leading into the minicopter hangar had its roller facing inward. Later on, if you have the electrical headroom, you can add door controllers to your circuit to allow all of the pods to be opened with the flip of a switch in the core. Make sure to upgrade the triangle tile that will be directly beneath each turret to sheet metal. Rocket damage to the stone honeycomb below the pod can splash this tile, bringing it dangerously close to breaking before any damage is done to the auto turret. And once those stone walls have been destroyed, it's very cheap to soft side a stone triangle tile and defeat the auto turret before it ever got the chance to do its job. You are now faced with another choice. What weapon do I put in my turrets? I submit either the Python revolver or the Thompson. I think these two weapons offer an excellent balance of range, accuracy, and damage, especially until you have the ability to just toss in some AKs. Connect the turrets to the electrical branches in the core and verify that all four come online when you flip the switch. Another completely optional addition to the windows is wooden shutters, which serve to deny visibility inside of your base. I personally love them and include shutters in just about every exterior window when I'm building. And there you have it folks, the completed bowline. At end state, you're looking at a daily upkeep of approximately 3K stone, 2.9K metal, 42 high qual, and a little wood if you opted for those shutters. Oh, what's that? You wanted to know the rage strength? I guess. The absolute minimum raid direct TC is approximately 26 rockets if and only if a raider exploits the inherent weakness of a stability bunker, the raid's foundations. I say approximately 26 rockets because most raiders use a mixture of C4, rockets, and explosive ammo to get the job done as cheaply as possible, but we do need a reference point, right? So, roughly 19 rockets get you through this stone honeycomb and then this HQM half wall. At this point, you need approximately five jackhammers, a nearby workbench, and almost a half hour of your time to soft side these foundations. Annoying? Yep. But do folks do it? Also, yep. This lets a raider bypass the bunker seal and gets them into the first section of the core. From here, the fastest way to loot is approximately three more rockets through this garage door, and then another four to get access to the TC. By the way, for only one more rocket and a whole lot less time, they could have gone directly through the walls protecting the TC. If a raider does choose to come through the front door, however, they're in for even more sulfur investment. In this configuration, the bowline's door raid path is approximately 29 rockets worth of boom to access the TC. And it's a lot worse if they try to door raid from the roof down. Well, that wraps it up, folks. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you see and you want more build tutorials like this one, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I'm just getting started here, but I have a lot of ideas to share with you folks, and I'm excited to keep growing and learning. My name is Marcus Attilius. Until next time, be safe and have fun out there, friends.